прошлом году был создан Last year, we have created a profile committee on the issue of the carbon regulation policies, which has included more than 30 biggest Russian companies, more than 10 key research and expert organizations. And in the framework of our current activities, a committee looks at all the main questions of climatic politics are starting from mechanisms of state regulation, issues of strategic target setting, and all the way to the issues of assessment of the full objective and correct assessment of greenhouse by Russian forests and other ecosystems. On the given slide, we have tried to unite all the measures that have led to the reduction of the greenhouse gases uh, realized by the real sector of Russian economy starting from 1990. And this is a big number of measures in different sectors of economy. And total total investments have made approximately $400 billion in total. First of all, these are measures taken by energy sector, increasing energy efficiency, transitioning of generation objects to more effective uh, types of fuel, hydro and nuclear power plant construction, modernization of the energy generation, including programs of capacity provision, uh, efficiency of which have been discussed during the previous meeting. A number of other measures have been conducted in oil and gas sector. First of all, I'm speaking about increasing of uh, side gas uh, processing and reduction of methane emissions. The next third effect from reduction. It's the steel uh, industry where we have realized a number of measures to decommissioning of a furnace, blast furnace uh, kilns, uh, coke utilization reduction and implementation of modern technologies. And the final out of big categories is transportation where we have conducted a number of measures of increasing fuel efficiency for uh, transportation and measures fighting against traffic jams in the cities. Totality of these measures and effects related with forestry sector have led us to the situation that reduction of greenhouse uh, uh, pollution compared to 1990 in the year 2017, as in the year 2018 <clears throat> was a leadership position compared to other countries. No other country was able to reduce greenhouse pollution by 48%, speaking about the period since 1990 until 2018. So the thesis from previous uh, sessions by one of the colleagues that Russia has non-ambitious goals sounds not really just to us. Russia already has reduced more than anybody else, while other countries continue increasing their greenhouse uh, pollution. So why Russia should discount the potential of economical growth uh, for even higher reduction of greenhouse pollution? Well, this is a still open question, but my colleagues, I hope, will answer this question later on. Realization of these uh, measures uh, within Russian industry allow Russian companies to be in a beneficial position compared to the competition with other countries. On a given slide, I've, I've shown you the charts uh, from SP Global Rating, where they compare assessments of carbon capacity for oil and gas industry, for combustion of uh, auxiliary gas and steel production pollutions. As you can see from these charts, Russian companies 
either above their foreign competitors or on the same level with them. There are certain exceptions, but this is a very obvious picture. I think this is a very just picture. Notwithstanding this situation in recent years, we do see attempts to uh, reduce these advantages of Russian companies uh, by artificial and non-transparent tools as uh, those which are offered by Euro Commission transborder carbon regulation mechanism. Nevertheless, Russian companies, as the state in total, have big plans on further reduction of greenhouse emissions. Notwithstanding the forecast of the economical growth that, well, keeping the current structure of the economy, it will lead to big number of greenhouse gases emissions. We see that on the horizon until 2030, the key element which is going to give us the emission growth will be reassessment of greenhouse flows in the forestry sector. But this is duly to relation to very old data that is being used about the condition of our forests. And right now our ministries actively work on improvement of the data and methodological approaches. So we do expect to have correct data. In addition to that, in a number of strategic documents and investment programs, we have planned a number of measures that will lead to additional reduction of greenhouse uh, emissions. And if the basic scenario will be followed, then by 2030, compared to 1990, reduction will make 42%. If we will involve more measures, or alternative scenarios or strategies, then this drop may reach 47%, while investments for such measures will take $210 billion, depending from combination of measures taken. Therefore, there are all, all assumptions to assume that by 2030, Russian Federation will stay one of the leaders in the area of reduction of greenhouse emissions, even considering the higher ambition of the announcements made by other countries about their targets in reducing the greenhouse emissions. The development of the climatic agenda for the real sector of economy gives both opportunities and risks. To our point of view, the key opportunities are related, first of all, with the participation of Russian companies in uh, global units for the reduction of greenhouses. And first of all, we're speaking here about mechanisms uh, mentioned uh, during the first uh, session, the Article 6 of the Paris Agreement. We also do expect acceptance of the rule of realization of this article during the conference uh, of the Industrial uh, Convention of the UN in uh, November of this year in Glasgow. Russian delegation has its own position on this particular matter. We as Russian Federation, we follow such position that undoubtedly they should take into consideration projects in increasing of the digestion of the greenhouses. Uh, non-involvement of uh, non-just barriers for these projects. And definitely we need to follow the principle of technological neutrality, whose idea takes us to the idea that the initial things, these are maximal reduction of the pollution and not artificial promotion and support of various technologies. The next possibility is... Uh, receiving additional market niches uh, by the competitive advantages uh, related with low carbon capacity of Russian products. There is a number of well-known examples, like everybody knows that products of Russian biggest aluminum company is less uh, carbon intensive than uh, products of its competitors. 
and there's a number of other examples like that. And possibility number three is development of the energy efficiency and implementation of additional digital technologies, which also are going to lead us to the reduction of greenhouse emissions and uh, will facilitate to efficiency of the business. While risks of climatic agenda related, first of all, with the reduction of demand for certain carbon intense uh, products, which are actively discussed in recent years, mechanism of uh, European transborder uh, carbon regulation and growth of tariffs for heat energy, electrical energy, utilities, transportation for all types of consumers in a case if some artificial limitation measures will be adopted by the climatic policy makers. While according to our opinion, the main mechanism for the ma maximization of uh, possibilities and risk management is the realization of the climatic projects. Well, projects aimed at reduction of emissions and increase of the digestion of the greenhouse gases. On the given slide, you see the potential of these uh, climatic projects in Russia and the assessment of uh, consultants from KPMG. Potential of these projects in Russia may reach 900 million tons of CO2 equivalents per year. The key potential is in the forestry sector related with forest protection and forest restoration for the absorption and big uh, potential of efficiency in the projects of increasing the efficiency of generation, managing the recycled waters, disposal of uh, associated gas, and a number of other measures. While the most popular and widely discussed measures like uh, using of the associated gas, while uh, utilization of renewable sources of energy in Russia doesn't have very big potential due to climatic conditions and territorial geographical uh, conditions and has a very high cost involved in realization of these projects. As for the mechanisms of realization of these uh, projects, to our point of view, this is important to note that projects have to be done on a voluntary basis and in compliance with all the international standards and technologies. And the potential of realization of these projects does depend from access to financing and the absence of artificial limitations as a technological neutrality principle I've mentioned previously. In Russian Federation, the main potential is given uh, to companies with less 10 euros per ton of the carbon equivalent, which shows very high significance of the potential. I'm just trying to formulate it in a better way. It's just right now, if you will look at the nominal price of the reduction of emissions in European system of uh, trading quotes and emissions, the price is approximately 40 euros today. Last year, it was approximately 25 years last year. So, which shows us high competitiveness of our solutions to reduce greenhouse emissions. And in the case of just approach, we will be able to use them additionally and find additional sources of financing for their realization. Now I would like to switch to the widely discussed topic in the framework of the climatic agenda. I'm speaking about European mechanism of transborder carbon regulation. On this slide, you can see assessment uh, by KPMG consultants about possible payments divided by sectors and products. As you can see, the gap is very big and it depends 
and approaches selected by commi EU Commission from sectoral reach and from the price applied and uh, from a number of other parameters. And currently we don't have answers to all of them now. While Russian suppliers and exporters to European Union do consider that it is necessary to apply just approach while doing this regulation. And of course, one has to comply to the rules of international law, conditions of WTO, climatic, uh, which prohibits to use measures uh, to fight against climatic changes with the purpose of creating some limitations for global trade. In case of uh, following the rules of international uh, in the framework of the transborder regulation, they need to take in consideration individual indicators and the level of uh, separate manufacturers while calculating the volume of the payment. Also take in consideration the results of the voluntarily climatic projects while uh, assessing the carbon capacity of the product. Also, we should admit uh, these uh, numbers and points uh, on the levels of national methodologies, which are able to take into consideration national peculiarities and national ratios. And not least important point here, which becomes even more important due to acceptance on 10th of March by Euro Parliament of their own resolution about given mechanism. We should have equality and non-discrimination while developing transborder uh, carbon regulation towards foreign manufacturers and European manufacturers. Being more particular, we're speaking about taking consideration of all the measures of support of European manufacturers, as giving them free quarters, supporting uh, their export measures, uh, uh, subsidies to large energy uh, manufacturers and generators. According to our opinion, Considering these principles will be will help us to provide just mechanism and will help us to minimize unjust cost of Russian manufacturers by bringing them down to numbers which are comparable to the current level of the tax load. Well, on this slide you can see data about current uh, VAT and taxes that Russian companies do pay for these types of products. So if you will speak about the lowest level of payments on transborder carbon regulation, no principal influence will not be posed. Well, that's all I wanted to tell you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ivan Valerievich.